Let's do it. To win the 100 grand, you will have to dazzle our judges, world-renowned cake artist Yolanda Gamp. <laughs> and acclaimed chef and well-known Curtis, Curtis Stone. <laughs> This finale will be the ultimate challenge. There will be no safety bait tonight. There will be two crime scene kitchens, and you'll need to make two different mystery desserts. Our champions will be the team that performs best across both bakes. There is no safety, so there's nothing to launch any team ahead of the others anymore. All right, we start off the first bake, which we are cleverly calling the first bake. <laughs> Patty and T, start your search. This first bake is super important. We're competing for $100,000. I mean, that is half the battle. What is this? Oh, is this full laminated dough? I see a block of butter that's been pounded out into a rectangle. This is a telltale sign of a full laminated dough, which would be used for something like a croissant or a danish. Oh, what is that? It looks like butter. I'm thinking this is the kind of butter that you use to make a full laminated dough. I think about croissant, I think about the Danish. What is this? There's a baking sheet, there's a popover pan, and there's a muffin tin. I don't know which one is used. What's this, like a popover tin? It's butter. So a popover pan is really similar to a muffin pan. We know we're making a laminated dough of some nature. Yeah, but we don't know what to actually bake and what the popover pan was used for. Red flour in the dishwasher. There is a sheet pan and this pan that I've never seen before. It looks like muffin, but higher. There's like some reminiscences of grease, so I have a feeling that it has been used. But I have no clue what it is. We have pastry bread, pastry bag, bread. I have strawberry here as well. I look in the trash, and then these two empty piping bags. The red one definitely has a strawberry jam in it. The one with the white, I'm definitely getting cream cheese. Uh, I have two tips for filling things. In the dish rack, I see two of the Bismarck piping tips. You use this to insert into a baked good and fill it from the inside. So connecting that to the piping bags I found, we have to fill whatever we bake with these two fillings. So we're making some type of croissant. 10 seconds. Honey, what are you doing? I have no idea what we are doing. So you check all the drawers? Yeah. It's almost time. Lights are starting to flick, and I'm like, oh, crap, the trash. Look, look. All right, what is that? What is that? I see the two pastry bags. Look at it. Smell it. Strawberry. What's that? Buttercream? This is the final. We had one shot to get all the clues correct. That's it. Literally. Uh, that is time. Second. Second. Go to your kitchens. Bakers, you'll now have four hours to recreate what you think is the mystery dessert. Okay. Finale, baby. Ready? Guess. Bake. All right. Let's talk. We need to not just get close to getting all the clues, we need to get all the clues because the stakes are just way too high to make any mistakes. There were all those different pans in the dishwasher, yeah. but none of those would be made for something that you need to fill with a, the Bismarck tip. I know that you have to use those to fill a pastry after it's baked, and if it's puff pastry, the only one that gets filled is a croissant. We are making croissants with a cream cheese and strawberry jam filling. This might be one of the first times that I feel really, really good about our investigation. You could do a lot of things. You could do a Danish, you can do a turnover, you can do a cruffin, which is like a croissant muffin. It was a light bulb, like, ah is that what you do? Ah it cruffin, it feels like it works. The popover pan is gonna give you that narrow shape. I've never had one of those. A cruffin is basically a croissant muffin, right? And sometimes it's filled with different fillings. So we're making a croissant muffin. They have the fillings of strawberry and cream cheese. This is for a hundred. This is for a hundred thousand dollars. We've perfected our craft of detective. We've made it this far, but we've been wrong before. I am lost, Laisa. For real? OK. I am definitely not helpful today. The feeling I had in the kitchen was the one when you're four years old in a supermarket and you lost your mom. And time is clicking. I'm just thinking about the molds that you saw. What about the cruffings? Do you put fillings on I it? I had, yes, no, there's okay. filling. OK, we're going with the cruffings. I don't know how to make that, though. <laughs> OK, I don't know either. We are going to think of what makes more sense for us. For this first bake, we're making croissant muffins filled with cream cheese and strawberry jam. Just one minute, just one minute, okay? okay. Yeah. It should be clear 
when you have something to bake. And for me, it's not clear at all. Every time, it gets harder and harder and harder. Are you all right? Uh, so you're doing math in your head. You need yeah, to calculate Yeah, I was, I was uh, we got two hours. We still got to fill it. Everything that we've learned from each bake, we're now applying it to this new challenge. Timing is everything. Amber and yes. Oh, hello, our oh, favorite hello. friend. You are two bakes away from $100,000 if it goes well. No pressure, 100 k if it goes well. Stakes couldn't be higher. They're pretty high right now. What would you do with it? I've worked really, really hard in my business, and I want to use that to continue to grow what we're building for right. ourselves. Because you guys met at that conference. We did. Yes, we did. For we did. women of color. Yes. And you were the only two pastry yeah. chefs? Yep. That's Crazy. incredible. Getting some of this money would help me to continue to increase what I'm trying to do with my company and for other, you know, women of color who want to be chefs and don't have jobs in the pastry world because there aren't any, I can provide that. You seem very cool and collected, other than that poor mixer that you're destroying. I'm a little confused. I'm looking for fatty and tea. Oh, they got eliminated. Yeah. They did. Yeah. No, oh. they didn't. They're top uh, three. Top three. <laughs> top three. <laughs> so hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. What would you do with it? Part of my winnings, I'm going to invest in taking some kind of advanced pastry course with actual like master pastry chefs. And school is expensive, so. Yeah. Um, so the self-taught yeah. bakers would be classically trained. That's the goal. Yeah. There's a that fist. The there's a fist fight happening. Someone that is. A Someone is French and angry. Everything is fine. Everything is under control. Do you think in addition to croissants, you were supposed to actually just bludgeon someone to death? Crime scene kitchen. Oh my god. 90 minutes remaining! C'est pas possible, un fou laminé les dos en quatre heures. C'est pas possible. When you're making a laminated dough, you need to firmly fold or pound the dough and butter together and let it rest. And that's going to create that beautiful rise. We got to roll them out, proof them, bake them, and we still have to fill them. Yep. We need to cool them before we can put the filling in. Take a deep breath. This kind of bake usually takes a lot of time, but there's $100,000 up for grabs. Now, that's life-changing money. So not only do you have to handle all the pressure, but you've got to bring your absolute best. It's going to be very, very interesting to see whether they can hold it all together for the finale. We're cutting it close on time. How are you feeling? Great. Welcome back. It's the Crime Scene Kitchen finale, and our finalists are vying for a $100,000 grand prize. OK, I'm calling it. Gorgeous. So just don't let them cool. Don't look at them. Let them do their thing. Well, here we are, guys. It's the finale. And today, all the bakers have to compete in two bakes and be judged on both. Your pacing is driving me. I'm sorry. I got to do it, though. So how are they doing? We have three teams all making a laminated dough. Camilla and Laisa and Amber and Yaz are both making croissant muffins filled with strawberry and cream cheese, while Fatty and T are making croissants filled with strawberry and cream cheese. So the smell of that is just so good, isn't it? Tell me about a laminated dough. It's a yeast-based dough, and you layer it with butter, and then you fold that butter in. And what you're trying to do is get many layers of butter throughout the dough so that when it bakes, it rises. You need the time to let it proof, and that's going to basically let them rise. So then when they go in, they'll bake nice and evenly. So let's talk about fatty and tea. Even though there are only self-taught bakers mm -hmm. left, every technique, it's as if they have studied without actually going to school. Maybe they're not the most technical, maybe they're not the most pretty, but I tell you what, they give you flavour. Every single thing that we've eaten this season that's made us go, oh my goodness, a lot of it's come out of their kitchen, so I can't wait to see their croissant. Okay. Laisa and Camille are making croissant muffins. One thing I love about Camille and Laisa is they have such attention to detail, but sometimes that's what gets them. They are as stressed out as I have ever seen them in this competition. I'm worried. You should be worried because, look, they've just pulled them out of the oven. They only have 20 minutes. So in that 20 minutes, they have to let it cool fully. Because if you try and stuff a cold jam or cream cheese filling into a warm thing, of course, it's going to melt. It sounds like a long time, but it's not. This thing's full of butter, so it takes longer to cool down than a piece of bread does when it comes out of the oven. So we might have a melted mess if they don't cool enough. 
because it's hot. I think we need the, it's good to have the jam inside. Amber and Yaz. Amber and Yaz work so well together. Amber has a vast knowledge of baking. They are making exactly the same thing as Camila and Laisa. So if this is the right bake, it's gonna come down to the smallest of details and the taste. We do not have a lot of time on this clock. It took them a while to figure out in their mind what was made. If these two are wrong and Fatty and T are the only ones to have guessed it, then they're gonna have a big lead going into the second bake. Okay, I think it's time to fill these babies. Do it. So try to sort. It's like the shoes. I've never seen too. Oh, hi. Hemorrhaged. Okay, it's okay. Go back in. One minute. <gasps> You're panicking. Yeah, that feels more balanced to me. This is what Maria presenting. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. That is time. <sighs> that was super, super tough and stressful. You know, we've worked so hard. I don't want to leave empty-handed. I don't want to leave without that 100K. Time to be judged. Amber and Yaz. Is that a croffin? I don't know what it is. Well, 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 what do we have here? We have a croissant muffin called a cruffin. It is filled with a cream cheese filling and a strawberry jam. The same thing as us. I would have never even thought of a cruffin. How did you follow the clues in the crime scene kitchen today? We found a popover pan. The popover pan had grease residue on the inside of it. I didn't know you filled a cruffin. Like, it's already so packed. It's dense. This feels a little compact. It's a very dense lamination. The flavor is certainly there. Unfortunately, the texture is a little less successful. The filling is really good, but the texture is off. The question is, is the mystery dessert cruffin? Yeah, I hope it is. Hopefully it is. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Laisa and Camille. More croissant muffins. So I just hope it's croissants. Oh, they look good. Look at that. Wow. You have cruffins filled with cream cheese and a strawberry jam. It was really hard because we were lost. The only thing that I could think of was the cruffin and croissant. Was the cruffin completely cool when you filled it? No. Because when you've put your cream cheese filling in, it's melted. It's made your dough just a little heavier than I think it should be. Don't get me wrong. You can see all of these beautiful layers, and the lamination is certainly there. We've already tasted another set of cruffins. If cruffin is the mystery dessert, we are going to have to really get nitty gritty about the difference between yours and Yaz and Amber's. But there's also a possibility that it's not the mystery dessert. Oh my God. Thank you. It can be the most beautiful dessert in the world. If it's not the right one, you're out of the game anyway. <laughs> I have to stop talking. Fatty and T. Fatty and T walk out with six of the largest croissants I think I have ever seen. It could be right. I am 100% worried, Crazy. without a doubt. Mm -hmm. We made croissants filled with a strawberry jam and a cream cheese filling. We found the Bismarck tips that tells me that something was injected after it was baked. And the only one that I could fill like that was the croissants. Look it's at that. It's remarkably light, knowing that you filled it, which is exactly what you want it to be. Look at the lamination here. I mean, what you want is all of these lovely little layers, these little pockets of air. They're beautifully golden on the outside. The filling is delicious. Yay. I love all of it. What you've put in front of us is absolutely delicious. And if what pops up out of the Confectionator 3000 is a stuffed croissant, then you're a big step closer to that $100,000. We have been getting by this whole competition with almost correct, but this is the finals. We have to be fully correct. If we're right. It gets us one step closer to the $100,000. There's only one winner, and we don't want to be called the Finos. We want to win this. 
This $100,000 is gonna be based on these two baits, that's it. So we cannot afford a misstep right in this part of the game. Welcome back to the Crime Scene Kitchen finale. You guys have baked the first of two mystery desserts that will win one team the $100,000 prize. Here's where things stand. Camille and Laisa and Amber and Yaz made cruffins, which are muffin-shaped croissants with a cream cheese and strawberry filling. And Fatty and T have made croissants also with a cream cheese strawberry filling. Confectionator 3000, reveal the mystery dessert. We're hoping that the cruffins are coming out of the confectioner 3000. I mean, I am super confident that these are croissants. I hate how long it takes for this thing to come down. Oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> the mystery dessert is Croissant muffins with a strawberry and cream cheese filling. You got it right. Yeah, I did, you know. Oh. We got it 100% correct. What an amazing time to finally figure out how to figure out the crime scene kitchen. <laughs> so frustrating. We might not be able to recover from this because we literally were the only team to get it wrong. Curtis, what clues should the teams have unraveled? Here's how they should have solved this one. You all deduced that the rectangular block of butter meant laminated dough. But the key clue was the used popover pan in the dishwasher, which meant you were making croissant muffins. We didn't see the popover grease, so like, I guess that's it, yeah. you know? The piping tips, along with the used pastry bags of vanilla cream cheese and strawberry jam in the trash, told you the desserts were stuffed with these fillings. You've all made the same thing. Unfortunately, Fatty and T, the only thing you didn't do was make it in a popover pan. C'est la vie, as the French say. Fatty and T, your bake was outstanding. But if you are to stand a chance of winning tonight, your detective work in the next round has to improve. So now it's time for our final bake. Guys, this is the last bake standing between one team and the $100,000 prize. The winners will be the team that performs best across both bakes. Yolanda, you set the final mystery dessert. In every way, this will be the biggest bake you've attempted on the show. And since it is the finale, you'll have five hours for the bake. So it's vital that you read all the clues in the crime scene kitchen correctly. There are three minutes <gasps> on the clock. <laughs> I'll take it, but it also makes me nervous. Three minutes, it means he's going to have a lot of things in there. It's gonna be hard. Oh, yeah. Fatty and tea. Do your thing. Here we go. Each team will get the same amount of time to examine the same clues. A ton of butter. Our journey has been very tumultuous. But this specific crime scene investigation is the one that is leading to $100,000. So we need to be 100% correct. Oh, lordy. OK. Uh, six, eight, 10-inch cake pans. We have three 10-inch, three 8-inch, and three 6-inch cake pans. That means three tiers, three layers each. This is going to be a monster of a bake. <laughs> I have a cocktail menu, Mai Tai, a mango margarita, a dark and stormy, the mojito, a hurricane, and a pina colada. We have to figure out how to translate one of these drinks, and it's three ingredients into a three-tier cake. All right, cocktails, a Mai Tai, alcohol, I see six cocktails on this list. I know it's a major clue. We can't be making a six cocktail cake, so we have to find more clues. Yeah. Smell this real quick. Lime. I see a pan. It could be a lemon. Well, lime curd. There's quite a few cocktails on here with lime. We need to find another clue. Like coconut. What is that? Lemon and lime. I see that there are two zesters. One has, like, lemon. The other one has lime zest on it, because I smelled that. It's a dark rum syrup. Smell it. Maybe a dark and stormy. Is that on there? Dark and stormy rum. Dark and stormy. Coconut. Rum, 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 rum. Mm. Go, go back to the menu. Go back to the menu. 
So I find a bottle of rum, also a dark rum syrup. So I know we need to use rum in our cake. Everything is rum. We have maraschino cherries and have, have fresh pineapple. And I see there is fresh pineapple and the maraschino cherries. Okay, ginger. I'm so confused, I don't know which way to go. Look, 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 we have a halko here. The lime that I tasted, that's the only thing that I'm 100% sure. This is a lime curd. Lime curd? Yeah. There's I a bunch it. of um, fruit here. I see ginger, but I don't see it processed in any way, so I don't think ginger is a part of this equation. So we're gonna just go ahead and eliminate a dark and stormy. Pineapple cherry, right here. Yep. There's pineapple and cherries in the fridge. We also know that there was a lime curd made. But we're leaning towards the Mai Tai as the inspiration for the whole tear cake. This is a leaf. I go around to the island and it is filled with decorating utensils. What is that? It's little bamboos. So there's going to be some type of fondant bamboo and fondant flowers. Now I got to try to remember all of this sitting here. I see the metal things, umbrella. Whatever we're making is going to have a lot of decoration. The monstera leaves. Gosh, we have to look at the colors too. I'm really looking at the island trying to memorize all the different tools, colors, and textures that I'm seeing because these are all going to be decorative elements that are critical to winning the grand prize. Wafer paper? Yeah, they made monstera leaves out of wafer paper. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Oh my god! Un, deux, trois. Quatre, quatre. Hey, please. Check the cake pants. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, three. Big ten, ten. And that is time! That three minutes went by so fast. It was way too much information for me. Okay. You'll now have five hours to create the final mystery dessert of the season. It's the most time we've ever given you. Ready, guess, face! Okay. Okay, I have three tier uh, cake. Uh, the yeah. rum that was used, did you taste it in the bottle? I didn't, I was distracted with your menu. I didn't have time to go to my side. You didn't go to your side? No. Mm. I, I still don't know how that happened. We had three minutes. We are in trouble. You didn't go to your side? No. I, I still don't know how that happened. You might have missed something, but I missed many things too. We have things to make. We make the batter, we make the buttercream, we make the rum syrup, we make things. No matter what's gonna happen, we're gonna think about it. We need to focus. We want to win. All right. Um, there was three cake pans. Uh-huh. We got five hours to make a three-tier cake. Uh, this is gonna be tough. I picked up the simple syrup and it smelled like a dark and stormy. And I was like, this, why does it smell like a dark and stormy? And I turned the bottle around and it was a rum. Mm -hmm. It was like the light bulb. It went was off. like God said dark and stormy. You said pineapple and coconut. That's what you want to make, the, the pina colada? I think it's too obvious, but it's the pina colada that had the many fruits. Yeah. And the spoons are soaked with the dark rum syrup. And we the feeling it's lime buttercream. Okay. For the second bake, we're making a pina colada cake. It's flavored with pineapple and coconut, topped with buttercream. We are not confident at all that this is the correct mystery dessert. Um, so, Patty, we're making a Mai Tai cake. Yep. It's going to feature alternating layers of pineapple and cherry uh, cake. We are making a Mai Tai three-tier cake soaked in rum simple syrup, then filled with lime curd and pineapple and maraschino cherry chunks. We were the most wrong on the first bake. So we cannot have another popover pan situation. Yeah. We need to get every clue right. Guys, yeah. $100,000 bake. How do you feel? I mean, it feels so great. We're here because we should be. It's just really hard and a little bit terrifying of a challenge. This is our biggest challenge. We want to leave no doubt that we deserve the grand prize. $100,000, guys. No pressure. $100,000. No $100,000. Laisa and Camille. Hello. It's that guy that's coming to tell jokes and annoy you on the 
Most important bake of your life. Right, exactly. I mean, yes, it's $100,000. The stakes have never been higher. We really want to win this thing. I know, yeah, right? For me, it's really about winning, you know, because I haven't worked for more than eight years. I was just taking care of my kids, my family, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. But coming back to the work world, I have doubts about myself. And the winning, I would be more uh, confident. And with the money, put that, that together, would be great. that would be great, you know? Yeah. I left the restaurant industry because it was too stressful, and here I am. And in fact, with all the stress that still happened in the crime scene kitchen, I love it, and I still want to come back. Okay, guys, carry on. Thank uh, you, Joe. Au revoir, Gerard de Baudu. Au revoir, a bientôt. A uh, domo arigato. Here I am, the host of Crime Scene Kitchen, you don't Ken say. Jong. <laughs> so, this is the final bake. Yes! Are you guys nervous? We're very nervous, very anxious. A cake like this, cake. you don't do it in five hours. Really? No. And it's a lot of money. Winning this $100,000. My heart would probably bust out of my chest. I'm very excited to try this cake. <laughs> Thank you. Woo. You sacrificed a lot to be a baker. 90 minutes remaining in your last bake ever. So I feel like I smelled a dark and stormy. Like that was the first thing that came to my mind. But I know that ginger is in a dark and stormy. I know that rum is in a dark and stormy. Mm -hmm. So I'm making a dark and stormy simple syrup and it's just not sitting right with me to put ginger in this. If we were supposed to use ginger, I believe we would have saw it on the zester. I'm thinking another cocktail. Time is going by so fast, we got to make a decision quick. But one decision could cost us $100,000. Welcome back to Crime Scene Kitchen, where our teams are baking their last dessert ever in hopes of winning the $100,000 prize. Needless to say, it's tense out there. Can you believe it? This is our final bake. Ma'am. <laughs> How did we get here? Sweat, laughter, and a lot of heart palpitations. Heart palpitations. This is the finale. It is the finale. It is for $100,000. Mm -hmm. We don't have time to go back and forth. We just got to make something. And, and use the flavors that we know we saw. Yes. That's it. Pina colada makes sense because that flavor would really pair well with that lime curd. We really didn't see any remnants of ginger yeast in the crime scene kitchen. So we are going to scrap the dark and stormy. You had lime and zest. And so because of that, we're going to change our cake to a pina colada inspired cake. Three tier, three layer butter cake soaked in dark rum simple syrup a lime buttercream, and garnished with fondant flowers and bamboo decor. Because we're going to put the lime in the coconut and drink it all up. There you go. Yolanda, you set the final bake of the season. So what's happened? I think I was very hard on them. All of the teams are making a three-tiered cake, and they've all decided to name it after a cocktail. Fatty and T are making a Mai Tai cake. Amber and Yaz were originally going to make a dark and stormy cake, but now they've changed it to a pina colada cake. Camille and Laisa are making a pina colada inspired cake, too. This is the toughest challenge that we've set. All three teams look like they're struggling in there. Ugh, they broke it. We have Camille and Laisa. I mean, look at that back table. It looks like a junk sale. And to me, that means stress. It's just falling apart. To this very moment, the decoration is starting to fall apart. Five minutes! Did it just get really hot in here? Uh, I'm gonna get it. Go all around. I don't, I don't know. know. Do whatever. Get get the flowers, get the petals, do something. I'm walking away. Don't run my home, my home, Camille. Wait it up. We got time. What's up here? Five, four, three, two, one, and that is time! Congratulations. This is our final tasting, everyone. We finished. We finished. Whew. For one last time, Laisa and Camille. What the heck? We have no idea what we're supposed to bake. We just hope that ours is good enough to win. I'm not looking forward for this moment. This is going to be really good. Yeah. What do we have here? Uh, you have pina colada cake. Pineapple cake on the top, coconut in the middle, and pineapple again on the bottom. 
The inside is a lime buttercream and the outside is a vanilla buttercream. And all the cakes are soaked in dark rum syrup. You know, they could have this. Should we be worried? Yeah. We saw a menu with a lot of different drinks on there. A lot of drinks. It was a lot of drinks. We tried to process all the information from the menu, and we had a hard time. Unfortunately, the flowers were not supposed to look like petals. They broke when we tried to assemble. Look at that. It's a very moist cake. The pineapple really comes through. Mm -hmm. Sweet, but not overly sweet. It sounds lovely. I love the natural coconut flavor that comes mm. through with the rum. It's delicious. Following a really successful first bake, you've created a beautiful three-tier cake that has lovely flavor. You wish it was decorated with some more finesse. But if there was a pina colada cake baked in that crime scene kitchen, you are right in this for the $100,000. Good luck, guys. Fatty and tea. Oh, yes. Pretty. Look oh. at that. What do we have here? We have a three-tiered Mai Tai-inspired cake. When I see theirs, I'm like, oh, my God. Mai Tai, I feel like something is wrong. We feel like we missed so many things. The layers of sponge are alternating cherry and pineapple with a lime curd in between each layer and a rum buttercream. <laughs> breathe, breathe. It's very tropical. Yeah. It makes me think of a Mai Tai, that's that for sure. That was the vibe we were getting yeah. from everything, so. We thought about a Mai Tai. We could have very easily missed something. The cake is very light, and it eats just a tiny bit dry. With a bit more of that rum syrup, not only would have we yeah, gotten yeah. more rum, but we would have probably got a slightly moister um, crumb on the cake as well. The lime curd is really punchy and bright and tart. Mm. I like that you colored it and it's not mm -hmm. way over. Yep. Yeah. But have you made the right dessert? That's the question. Last but not least, Amber and Yaz. All right. Wow. Look at that. Whoa. Wow. <sighs> that decoration is beautiful. What do we have here? We took reference from the pina colada, put dark rum syrup filled with a coconut buttercream. This middle layer is filled with a lime curd and a lime buttercream. That is, that is like crisp. First, I honestly thought it was a dark and stormy, but we didn't see remnants of ginger anywhere. This cake is very well decorated. To think that you did this in five hours is quite unbelievable. I really love the way the layers look. This is a great cake. Yeah. Thank you. Damn. The flavor of your lime is just wonderful. And your balance on the rum, I think, is perfect. This cake tastes like a cocktail. It really does. There's a $100,000 question here. What was made in that crime scene kitchen? Who's made us the $100,000 cake? You guys are sitting really pretty. It definitely went better than the first bake. Whether or not it wins us that $100,000 or not, we just have to see. So that is the end of the final tasting. We have two cakes inspired by a pina colada and a Mai Tai cake. Remember, the judges will decide who gets the $100,000 based on how you did across both bakes tonight. Here we go. Please let this be a pink colada cake. Please let, let it have be. the feelings that we had. 
this has to be it. Like, I really hope it's my tie. This cake with the bamboo, with the flowers, that's what's coming out the confectionator, we claim it. The mystery dessert is a dark and stormy cake. Yo, in the jugular. <laughs> a three-tiered, three-layered cocktail cake with alternating tiers of ginger, lime, and ginger cake. Ginger nobody got. It's maddening, <laughs> honestly. Soaked in a rum syrup with a lime curd buttercream filling. The cake is decorated with wafer paper leaves, modeling chocolate bamboo, and sugar flowers. This is the first time this season that no teams correctly worked out what the mystery dessert was. Nobody got it. The dessert, right? I don't know how they're going to decide the winner. Yolanda, how were they supposed to figure this out? Here's what they should have seen in the crime scene kitchen. The baking tins in the dishwasher indicated a three-tier, three-layer cake was made. The crucial clues were the dark rum simple syrup and the ginger and the lime on the zester in the sink. With ginger? Of the drinks on the cocktail menu, only one had all three of those elements. The dark and stormy cocktail, the inspiration for the cake. The design and sculpting materials on the island reflected the decorations for the cake. Sugar flowers, modeling chocolate bamboo, and wafer paper leaves. Thank you, Yolanda. The judges are going to have to see who got closest to the two mystery desserts in every detail and look at taste and execution. Winning this competition for me is so important in so many levels that I don't know even how to start to explain. This isn't just about us getting $100,000. It's what it really means to us to use that money for our dreams and for our family. We are so close to possibly winning $100,000 that I can start actually thinking about what would I do with it. Welcome back to the Crime Scene Kitchen Grand Finale. A life-changing $100,000 is at stake. We're about to name the champions of Crime Scene Kitchen Season 2. This was by far the hardest decision that we've had to make. If one team had discovered the zester with ginger and worked out dark and stormy was the cake theme, they would have likely won outright. Nobody did that. We had to take a really close look at those cakes and consider them alongside the desserts from your first bake. Amber and Yaz, the inside of your cake missed the mark, but was perfect at matching all the decorative elements of the mystery dessert. Camila and Laisa, your cake was moist and tasty, but on the exterior, your presentation was underwhelming and contained elements that there were no clues for. Fatty and tea. Your cake was a carnival of color, but there were many details throughout the cake that were not in the mystery dessert. There was one cake we felt stood out in this round overall, and that, combined with guessing well in the first bake, will see this team crowned Crime Scene Kitchen champions and take home $100,000. All right, guys, here we go. Confectionator 3000, who are the champions of Crime Scene Kitchen season two? Other than weeping, how do you guys feel? Overwhelmed. Um, when we decided to sign up to do this show, I told Amber that from this point moving forward, we're gonna celebrate ourselves no matter what happens. We're gonna encourage each other. 
we're going to cheer for each other and just be grateful for the moment and the experience and live in it because Amber and I have heard a lot of so no's. many. Like, we couldn't even get money for our business. Like, it was that many. And to receive a yes, but to also do it together. Look, that's our name. Yo, that's our name. <laughs> <laughs> You can see the love and respect you have for each other, and you can tell that you're hardworking and passionate. You guys baked beautifully for us, all of you. We were so honored to try everything that you made, and you've impressed us no end. So just deserves congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And now all that's left to do is present the Crime Scene Kitchen Trophy. Here it is. This is my name. That's for you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. This is our name.